if, if, the, if the guiding idea is that you want to provide something for students, essentially remedial, giving them what used to be provided in the classical education so that when they're going to university, they're, they're better equipped. Um, they're it's it's a combination, I right? I, I, I want to show people how, how easy it is to do these things so it becomes more of a um, natural thing to just do it uh, as a hobby thing, okay. right? Um, so, so you can get the, the, the staff and the students to start sharing these things, right? The whole r remix culture, get them to yeah. start putting things out there, sharing it with each other, seeing where it takes them. Maybe someone got some ideas or some angles on things that we can't even imagine yet. And if, it, if, if the tools are available and there's some support by, well, what I will call more professional academics, it makes it so much easier because I don't, I, I only see professional academics in things like Academic Earth and, um, and similar things, right? Where right. it's overproduced in my opinion. I have. Okay. It's very. It's very difficult to find people like yourself um, that just went in there and just said, "I'm going to do this," and then just played with it. Yeah. And 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 then there's a there's the whole um, amateur level, if we can call it that, or the self-taught. Um, they're just throwing everything in there, like yeah. big time, right? And and they're making a lot of what I will call mistakes or assumptions, or they, they might have read um, some areas and kind of gotten uh, an interest. Yeah. And, and then they just kind of, in my opinion, jumped the gun. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Especially now I'm in the group that I invited you to, the whole Trivium thing. There's a really, really huge interest in this uh, area, right? But it seems as if because it's so difficult to get a hold of many of the resources or some of them are not really easy to read yeah. then they don't really have the um, they don't have the door they don't get the initial tool set and and that's not even uh, trying to 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 speak badly about anyone it's just that personally i hated grammar until i started theology Mm -hmm. Until I uh, got acquainted with Latin and Greek, yeah. I didn't see any reason to use grammar because grammar is something you learn naturally and you know it when you're seven or you won't ever learn, right? Yeah, although so, here in the United States, um, that's really no longer the case. Um, pedagogically, when my generation, I'm, I'm in Generation X, Mine was the last where they did, you know, for instance, a sentence diagram, which is you know, a common way of teaching uh, grammar, and, and it's kind of drill-like, and, and you can do it in front of the class, and it, it's very helpful to do that. They quit doing that because of changes in, in pedagogical theory that saw it as, uh, you know, oppressive or restrictive or something like that. And what we have now are students who have never done that. Two, two generations, one, you know, right before me and then the, the, the still younger generation. And not having gone through that sort of exercise, class after class after class, they, they don't have any sort of um, sense about how things fit together. And of course, sentence diagramming isn't the only way you could do this, there, there'd be other possibilities, but they put nothing in its place. But it's, it's also because it seems to me as if a lot of educational um, institutions have, have killed it. They've taken out the soul. Um, I'm trying to, to use a lot of references to, um, uh, to, to, to uh, popular culture. Um, I, I compare these things with um, martial arts. Yeah. It's very boring doing katas, right? Yeah. It's fucking boring. But well, uh, you have to do it, otherwise you don't develop the, the exactly, repertoire that's needed. Exactly, and it's, it's exactly the same with every other, uh, all the other aspects of uh, what you would call algorithms. Yes. Right? Whether it's language or math, 
you have to do the whole, the whole work, right? You have to sit there and, and just do line upon line upon line of math until you're getting blue in the face and you hate it. But then when you see it applied, then the light bulb kind of turns on and you go, ah, now I understand. It's a whole karate kid thing, right? It's the wax on, wax off. Yeah. But because of uh, a lot of what I would call dusty or boring teachers, they don't put it in that context. Yeah. So you can't um, grasp why it's important. Yeah, there's been a tendency in educational theory, say in the last 20, 30 years, to frame things in terms of an old paradigm, which was uh, chalk and talk and, and you know, lecturing and rote memorization and all that sort of stuff, which, yeah, you're right, if, it's, if, if the pedagogue is not very good, it, it's, it's stultifying. And then to contrast that to a new paradigm where everything is very dynamic and interactive and, and all this sort of stuff, which would be good, except that the students don't have the basic skills and dispositions acquired to, to actually make any use of that, that innovative, fun stuff. And so what we have now is a whole generation of kids and you know in our colleges and, and you know, still in, in high school who and actually in the workplace too, because this is becoming a big problem for uh, for businesses, who never learned how to learn. And they 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 haven't been challenged um, and they've gotten the idea that it should all be, you know, very fun and engaging or else it's no good. So they, they've gotten the wrong understanding of what what's going on in education and there's been very little attention paid to the development of the pedagogue themselves exactly <laughs> there's a lot of talk about you know being engaging and, and showing your students you care and all that sort of stuff and that's nice but um, that doesn't give you any concrete guidelines and you know everybody tends to overrate themselves I think with that sort of thing so even even um, wouldn't you call it over professionalism because what I have seen um, of course mainly here in Denmark but I'm pretty sure that it's the same the world over is that teachers kind of get their soul pulled out of them um, now I was commenting on, um, on you, that. Mean, you mean you mean uh, you mean university teachers or do you mean any um, any teacher any any educator uh, they seem right. to have lost contact with their own humanity. Uh, I know that sounds a bit harsh, but follow well, me on this. We have, we have two different tracks. Uh, we have um, our, our kindergarten through 12th grade teachers, they get an education degree. And that's from the, a school of education. So within the university, you've got a separate school of education, which is dominated by, um, you know, practitioners from that, that field who generally aren't very good at educating. And so they, they turn out bad teachers and they just sort of perpetuate this. And they, they generally have very little contact with the sort of classical education that, you know, we both want to see. And they see that as sort of the enemy. Um, but then we have the, the people who are going to be teaching all the disciplines within the university. And they've gone through, you know, a graduate program. Uh, and yeah, there's a problem of professionalization there as well. Usually they've had no pedagogical training. Um, they've just been taught how to become good researchers, which is, you know, the, 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 there's there's a, a virtue to that, right? Sure. Um, you, you should know what you're talking about when you're teaching something, but there's there's no... I mean, there, there are some places where this is, this is not the case, but in general there's very little attention paid to um, how to teach undergraduate students. But I think it's a fundamental problem of how to teach anyone. And I see this in, in so many fields. It's as if the professionalism uh, promotes two branches of thinking. Um, the, the, the traditional uh, orator thing where you are at a podium and you are telling someone what the thing is about, right? And yeah. then, and then you have the the kind of militaristic drill sergeant thing where uh, the student have to do something by road, right? And none of these things is in classical education. 
in classical education, the the highest way of learning is about dialogue. Yeah. And that's been totally killed. Yeah. I don't see dialogue anymore. Um, it's as if because we've been getting used to books, books is actually a non-dialogue medium, right? Traditionally, when someone was telling stories, you would yeah. have a, an audience and you would engage with them. Yeah. Just like a stand-up comic or, um, or even traditional theater with uh, the globe, you would get that response from your audience. It would be some sort of dialogue. But with modern movies and, and books and, and education, it's just all one way. Well, there, there is, a, like I said, there is that, that new paradigm stuff which focuses on experiential education or service learning or you know, all, these, all these things that fall under the rubric of innovative education. And, but there's still a disconnect there because um, students do tend to like that stuff, but they don't act, there, there's, there's not a, a lot of evidence that they actually learn very much from it. Um, no. And they, you know, it's not connected to the other modes of education that are going on in the classroom. There's not, there's no, in, there's nothing integrating it. You know, what I, what I feel that 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 is lost somehow is again the, the, the human side, right, where the educator is humble. Oh yeah. Where the educator actually realizes that they are in a situation of learning as well. Yeah. You can, especially when you get to university, the fact that they that they still tend to to assume authority in every single aspect that's being discussed. You you are dealing with uh, with young people from an age of what eighteen to in their twenties, right? It's not yeah. as if they haven't had enough time to master anything. They could easily have reached a level where you as an educator are actually lacking. 